Hi guys, as we know, MG are king at making affordable electric cars. And next to me are two of the best. Now we have the MG4 and the new facelift MG5. But which one of these two is gonna come out on top? Now how this is going to work is we're going to go through lots of different categories, things like price, power, interior, exterior, and a water point for which one of these two comes out on top. So let's jump in at the deep end. First category is going to be the specs. Now the MG5 you're going to get in an SE or a trophy like the one next to me, and the batteries are identical. Now when we move over to the MG4 we get an extra option because we get an SE, an SE long range and a trophy spec, with this one being the SE. Now, purely because there's more options, the point is going to go to the MG4. Next up, and arguably one of the most important, the price. The MG4 starts at £26,000 and can go all the way up to £32,000. The MG5 has a smaller price bracket, but it starts at £31,000 and goes to £34,000. So the second point goes to the MG4. Like I mentioned, the MG5 comes with one battery size, a 61 kilowatt hour battery, which is pretty reasonable. Whereas the MG4 SE starts at 51 kilowatt hours and the long range and trophy, you're going to get a 64 kilowatt hour battery. Point three, MG4. The second most important thing when buying an electric vehicle, other than range, is of course the charging time. Now these figures are from 10% to 80% on a 50 kilowatt hour public charger. The MG4 SE with a smaller battery will take around 40 minutes, with the long range trophy taking around 60. Now the MG5 is a whole minute slower, taking it 61 minutes. So by the sake of one minute, the MG4 is going to take the point. Now when it comes to range, the MG4 SE will get 218 miles. The Trophy will get 260, but the SE long range will get 270 miles. Now that's quite a lot of range for your money. And as we move over to the MG5, the SE gets 250 miles, and the trophy next to me gets 235, but I have been seeing more. If we're gonna to stick to the facts of the spec sheet, the point goes to the MG4. My favorite category, power. Now the MG5 has 156 PS, and the MG4 can have 170 or 203, depending on the spec. I think that's an easy point to the MG4. Next up, the efficiency. Now the MG4 is supposed to get 3.6 or 3.7 miles per kilowatt whereas the mg5 the specs were actually a little bit harder to find but according to our best mate google it can get up to four miles per kilowatt others did say 3.6 but to give the benefit of the doubt i'm going to go point mg5 when it comes to weight i think the results are going to be a little bit obvious with the mg5 being a state car it weighs just over two tons whereas the mg4 only weighs just under 1.7 tons well, that actually isn't too bad for an electric car. So point, MG4. The MG5 got a significant upgrade when it comes to the looks of the facelift. And it looks a lot more like an electric vehicle rather than an MG version of a Passat. Now, the MG4 though, it has these aggressive lines and I think the styling just looks fantastic. And if you get the trophy version, you even get an epic spoiler. So even though the MG5 may be a little bit of a plain Jane, Points goes to MG4. Now we are on the SE of the MG4, so the interior is a little bit basic. Now you do have your infotainment system, you do actually have a screen in front of you here, and everything is quite minimalistic, I'm gonna go with. Whereas the MG5, it feels, do you know what, a little bit more luxurious. You have part leather seats, you've got the same screen as you find in the MG4, but everything feels a little bit more like a car, if that makes sense. So this one, I'm gonna give a point to the MG5. Firstly, excuse the mess. This is our actual car. So we have things like football gear in here and this is the dog's car, really. So meaning that the rear seats, there's actually quite a lot of room. Being a mini SUV, we've got plenty of headroom and that's something you don't have to worry about. Plus, plenty of room for everything you need. The MG5 though, you've still got plenty of leg room. The headroom's actually better than I thought it was gonna be. 
And we haven't got football gear on the side. And purely based on comfort, I'm going to award the point to the MG5. The MG4 is demonstrating perfectly its big boot room, 362 litres to be exact. However, the point is going to go to the MG5. Being an estate car, it's got 578 litre boot, which is plenty of space. Now, our bonus point for the MG4 is going to be something a little bit funky. The fact you don't need a start button, you can simply just get in and it'll start itself when the key's available. Like when you do have the key, it just turns on for you automatically. Whereas the MG5, it actually has a start button. And to be fair, we're gonna give a bonus point to the MG5 as well, purely because of the ease of finding your driving mode. Now in the MG4, we have to find it through the screen, which if I can find it in the driving section, it's a little bit of a faff and not easy to do every time you get into the car. Whereas in the MG5, we have a physical button that we can just press like so. And we even have one that's for the regenerative braking to make it stronger or weaker. Now that's definitely a point to the MG5 because I much prefer a button. Now I've had plenty of time to become accustomed to the MG4, especially the driving side of things. And with it being rear wheel drive, fairly lightweight for an electric vehicle and plenty of torque and power, it's pretty great to drive. I mean, I have no real complaints. In terms of grip, it has plenty. It corners lovely. And in terms of fun of an EV, if you want to have a little b road blast, this is more than capable. In terms of regen, it's pretty strong. I quite like it. It doesn't bring you to a stop. The steering is really direct. It puts you exactly where you need to be. You can feel the rear going round if you do really want to push it, but it's nothing that is, as I'd say, dangerous. The turning circle as well in this is absolutely fantastic. It's one of the best that I've seen and I love that about this. It's so easy to maneuver. And what more can I say? It really is a great car to drive. It's very enjoyable, yet you can still sit back and relax in it as well. The MG5, in comparison to the MG4, we're front wheel drive, we're heavier, we've got less power. But the car's doing everything you expect it to do. It's an estate car, it's an EV. It's not designed to be the fastest, it's not designed to be the best handling but it does everything pretty damn well. The steering feels nice, the regen is great. Granted, both MGs don't bring you to a full stop, and I feel like the MG4's regen is a little bit stronger. But I really can't complain about the drive of this. It's comfy, it's easy. It's just super, super nice to drive. But to someone who is all about fun, and mostly about performance. The MG4, you can have a little bit more fun on the B roads. Whether that's the rear wheel drive and the lightweight and the more power, I'm gonna have to. Well, the MG5 doesn't agree apparently. The final result by a unanimous vote, or as I like to call it, facts on a piece of paper. The winner is the MG4. Whilst both are still excellent cars, they certainly do have their separate uses. But there we have it, guys. You all know the drill. To make my journey your journey, like, follow, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.